of southern Africa, the kingdom of Lesotho stretches over vast high plateau. With its annual rainfall of a thousand millimeters, it is like a giant natural water tower in the middle of the southern part of the continent. At present, this valuable resource is only partially used and most of this white gold flows into the South Atlantic Ocean. The Lesotho Highlands Water Project will completely change this situation. This is one of the most ambitious hydraulic development projects in the world. The project will take about 20 years to complete. The overall scheme forms a complete interconnected network of five high dams, one medium-sized dam, 225 kilometers of tunnels and three pumping stations. This is a multi-purpose project. For the Republic of South Africa, there is an urgent need to supplement the existing water supply to the country's commercial and industrial heartland, which includes the Greater Johannesburg and Pretoria conurbations. For Lesotho, the objective is to convert this enormous natural wealth into economic benefits through a regional development program with hydropower, water supply and irrigation schemes. It was at Mazaru on the 24th of October 1986 that the governments of South Africa and Lesotho signed the treaty approving the Lesotho Highlands project and gave the go-ahead for implementation of phase one. At the same time, the Binational Joint Permanent Technical Commission was created and drew up a general organization chart for the project. LHC, or Lesotho Highlands Consultants, was also set up shortly after, bringing together European, South African and Basotho consulting engineers. LHC has its main office in the capital city of Lesotho uh, in Maseru. We have regional offices at the various work sites. Our staff is distributed evenly uh, throughout those offices. All design work is carried out in Macero with some assistance and analysis uh, back in Europe. Where previously the only method of transportation over the mountain was on foot or on horseback, mobilization for the project is effectively opening up the country providing rapid development of modern infrastructure and bringing with it all the benefits this encompasses. Fully serviced site villages and administrative centers are erected to accommodate the engineers and technicians and house their families. All these facilities will later become a valuable resource for developing tourism. Katsi Dam and Storage Reservoir on the Malibar Matso River are key elements in the development of the Lesotho Highlands Water Project. The part of the project that LHC is involved in is Katsi Dam itself. This is a 180 meter high concrete arch dam. It will be the highest arch dam in Africa and one of the largest dams in Africa. The reservoir runs for about 35 kilometers upstream of that and then LHC is also responsible for the transfer tunnel, which is the first 45 kilometers of tunnel. The gorge is about 230 meters deep and forms a wide U-shaped valley cut into the sound basalt rock. Design of the arch dam required highly complex studies. These were performed with mathematical models developed by LHC engineers, integrating all site characteristics. During the last three years, we have produced approximately 1,000 construction drawings, and we have been reviewing some uh, important parts of the Katsedam design. River diversion works are required to make the site dry. These consist of twin 7 meter diameter tunnels about 600 meters long.
river diversion works also includes a 35 meter high rollcrete coffer dam. The construction method used for this dam is the roller compacted concrete method. Here we have the contractor carrying out a trial using roller compacted concrete. The purpose of this trial is in order for him to prove his compaction equipment and secondly to also prove the concrete mix design and suitability for work in the main upstream coffer dam. To prepare the foundation for this imposing structure, 1.2 million cubic meters of rock had to be excavated. It took more than two years to complete this phase. Capacity of the quarry is also measured in millions. 2.5 million cubic meters of basalt selected for the quality and homogeneous characteristics of the rock. A carefully choreographed ballet is organized to ensure constant supply to the concrete production system. 25 kilometers of conveyor belts bring the raw materials to the batching plant to be mixed with the cement. The spillway design of Katse Dam is also worthy to note. Some 6,000 cubic meters per second will be passing over the spillway weir, following a shoot of 30 meters before being dispersed by the serrated teeth of a bucket. They will fall into the plunge pool, which is an unlined plunge pool, with minimum erosion to the rock. This is due to a combination of a tailwater dam controlling the water level and uh, the very efficient dispersion effect of the teeth of a bucket. Another specific technique adopted to improve stability conditions is the introduction of a preformed joint at the base of the arch. A truly impressive production center has been set up at Katsi to create a huge concrete arch. 2.2 million cubic meters of concrete will have been cast by the end of 1996. The concrete is made with aggregates up to 150 millimeters in diameter. To complete this structure, 2,200 lifts, each 2.5 meters high, are required. The present production of concrete takes 60,000 cubic meters per month and the expected production of concrete will be 90,000 cubic meters per month in about four months. The whole scene evokes the movement of a vast clock, where everything is synchronized and takes place at the appointed time. 2,150 people are engaged on this enormous task, including 1,940 basutus. The cableway connects the two sides of the valley, 1,100 metres apart. Its capacity is 30 tonnes. Maintenance is carried out daily, as this cableway is vital for managing all movements above the site. Katsi will be one of the most impressive dams in Africa. The remainder of the project is progressing satisfactorily. Um, although some of the completion dates have been extended, uh, we don't anticipate that any of the associated works will affect the completion of the dam in any way. By mid-1994, the highest blocks have already reached a height of 70 metres from the base. For such a vast site, all cement materials are trucked in from South Africa. Summer and winter, progress on the site is punctuated every 40 minutes by deliveries of bolt carriers, each carrying 30 tonnes of ordinary Portland cement and fly ash. 
The concrete mixers perform another ballet. These deliver the concrete around the clock and fill the large cylindrical hoppers which carry the concrete to the various monolithic sections. To respect the schedule, as much as 4,000 cubic meters of concrete will be placed per day at peak production, with work continuing 22 days per month, night and day. Work began on the intake tower in 1992. This is the most original single structure within the scheme. The structure is made up of a, of a base 5 meters thick, 40 meters in diameter, and 7,000 cubic meters of concrete. 350 tons of steel reinforce the base. A shaft on top of the base will span 78 meters in height and will support an operating platform at level 2060. The tower is designed to resist earthquakes and has several alternative intake levels discharging into the diversion tunnel. It is sized for the ultimate stage of the overall development project. Quite an important aspect of the design of the arrangements here in terms of the gates which uh, admit water into the tower and therefore into the tunnel is that these gates do not control the flow of water through the tunnel. That is governed entirely by how much water is drawn at the hydroelectric power station at the far end of the tunnel. The third most important component of the works is the tunnelling. 1,200 workers from Lesotho are engaged on tunnelling operations, supported by about 200 specialists from South Africa and Europe. The time that they actually spend underground is of the order of 10 hours because the travelling underground takes at least one hour into the tunnel and one hour out of the tunnel. The ventilation has proved very capable of keeping the working conditions underground safe for the workforce. At the front of the machine we have this rotating head which is forced against the rock so that you have a force of 22 tonnes on each of these cutters against the rock face. At the end of two years, the tunnels have been driven precisely enough for a perfect breakthrough to be made by the powerful tunnelling machines. The breakthrough took place in October 1994 marking the end of all tunnelling work for Phase 1. Efforts now continue with equal enthusiasm to complete Phase 1A of the project by its planned commissioning date of December 1996.
There is a, actually a lot of uh, uh, companies, foreign companies involved in this project, uh, mainly from Europe and South Africa. And um, I think uh, everybody likes being in Lesotho and uh, they, I'm sure they like, uh, the people are happy, uh, everybody is friendly. Uh, as we say in Sesotho, uh, peace, reign and prosperity. Or what it means is that is a hot or pull and